pravlični kotiček na Timi Kids TV. Big and small. Once upon a time, long ago, deep in the forest, lived big and small. One day, their mommy took the mushroom picking. Small was still little. He was afraid of everything and knew almost nothing. Big was proud, clever, and brave. As they were walking through the forest, Mommy noticed something moving in the bushes. Small started crying because he thought it was the bugaboo. Big comforted him by pointing out that hiding in the bushes was a bunny with big pointy ears. Deeper in the forest, Mommy heard a noise. Small started crying because he thought it was the bugaboo. Big comforted him by pointing to a branch where a bird was singing happily. Soon, Mommy noticed something on the ground. Small started crying because he thought it was the bugaboo. Big comforted him by pointing out that hiding among the leaves was a snail with his shell. When they came across a beautiful mushroom, Mommy grumbled. Small started crying because he thought it was the bugaboo. Big comforted him by explaining that Mommy must have remembered something. He was right. She forgot her mushroom basket at home. As they were rather slow when walking together, Mommy told her children to wait by the mushroom while she runs back home to get her basket. Small started crying because he thought the bugaboo would come. Big was brave, but not brave enough for both of them. So they went together, hand in hand, to look for Mommy. When they came home, Mommy wasn't there. So the brothers went back into the forest. But Mommy wasn't there either. They both cried because they thought the bugaboo had come. But it wasn't so. As they were walking home on the right path, Mommy was walking on the left path. When she couldn't find them in the forest, she hurried home down the right path, while they were looking for her down the left path. But as soon as Mommy heard her children cry, she ran over to them and hugged them ever so tightly. At first, they got scared because they thought the bugaboo had come. But then, while in Mommy's tight embrace, they knew that there was no such thing as the bugaboo. And what did Small learn? Well, he learned that even Big isn't always brave, that he too isn't always right, that he too doesn't know everything, and that he too sometimes cries. No wonder, for he too was once little and knew almost nothing. And what about the bugaboo? Well, no one has ever heard or seen him at all. Buggy Bug Once upon a time, long ago, deep in the forest, lived a ladybug called Buggy Bug. Why did they call her that, you ask? Because this bug would spend every day bugging everyone around by going, Buggy Bug, Buggy Bug, with her little fingers. This bugged her friends most of all. One day, as Buggy Bug was sadly searching for her lost ball, an ant stepped onto her path. The bug gave the ant a Buggy Bug, Buggy Bug, the ant walked away disappointedly, leaving Buggy Bug to wonder why she didn't want to be her friend. One day, 
Buggy Bug was curiously wondering what the inside of a turtle shell looked like. Her turtle friend allowed the bug to take a look inside. Buggy Bug was so grateful that she gave the turtle a loving Buggy Bug, Buggy Bug. But the turtle didn't like that one bit and quickly shut the bug out of his shell. One day, Buggy Bug was angrily marching along the riverbank. A strong wind prevented the bug from flying over the river. Out of the bushes came a beetle and flashed his friend a smile in hello. Thinking the beetle was mocking her failure to fly over the river, the ladybug gave the beetle a buggy bug, buggy bug. The beetle sadly retreated, not knowing why buggy bug was so cross with him. One day, as Buggy Bug was happily showing the dragonfly her new spot, she went, Buggy Bug, Buggy Bug. The dragonfly flew away unhappily, and Buggy Bug couldn't share her joy with him. As the days went by, Buggy Bug felt more lonesome. She had no idea why everyone was hiding from her. Feeling abandoned, Buggy Bug burst into tears and gave herself a buggy bug, buggy bug. Ouch! This caused her to jump high into the air in surprise. What did she realize? Her buggy bug, buggy bug wasn't very pleasant at all. Oh no! she cried. But some tears came out of relief, for the bug realized why all her friends were hiding. They didn't like her buggy bug, buggy bug, either. So what did the ladybug do? Easy peasy, she went to find every one of her friends, apologized, and promised never to do a buggy bug, buggy bug again. Then came the hardest part. She had to keep her promise. Now, every time buggy bug got itchy fingers, she did a little dance and hugged her friends with all her might. And we all love a hug, don't we? But this ladybug is still called Buggy Bug. Do you know why? Because of her lucky buggy spots, of course. Finger Friends Once upon a time, long ago, deep in the forest, lived five friends. Thumb was the fattest. Pointer finger loved to gossip. Middle finger was the tallest. Ring finger loved to brag about his beauty. Pinky finger was a curious little fellow. One day, the five friends decided to build a treehouse. Thumb wanted to build a wide treehouse near to the ground. Pointer finger spent the whole day looking at other people's tree houses. Middle finger wanted to build the tree house on the highest branch with the perfect view. Ring finger wanted a glass tree house that would reflect his beauty. Pinky finger just wanted to hide away in a bird's nest. They spent all day arguing each friend insisted they should build his version of the treehouse. When evening came, the friends became tired and a cold wind made them shiver. So they snuggled close together to keep warm. Suddenly, it no longer mattered who was fat, who was small, who was clever, and who was beautiful. They discovered that the most important thing was that they had each other and could help each other out. And the next day, they built the treehouse together. It was wide enough for Thumb, pretty enough for Pointer Finger, high enough for Middle Finger, glassy enough for Ring Finger, and small enough for Pinky Finger. They spent their days playing in the treehouse, jumping onto piles of leaves, rolling down meadows, building swings on branches, dancing in circles, 
talking by the fire and chasing and tickling each other. But when night fell and they became sleepy, or when winter came knocking, the five friends snuggled close together and gazed at the stars from their treehouse. They talked all about how lovely it is to laugh, sing, and sleep together. Little Miss Fox Once upon a time, long ago, deep in the forest, lived Mommy Fox with three fox cubs. One day, Little Miss Fox decided she was old enough to go on adventures all by herself. While her brother and sister were already sitting at the table, Little Miss Fox was still playing. When they went to brush their teeth, Little Miss Fox went to eat supper that was already cold. Mommy Fox had gone to sleep, so she missed story time and she missed her goodnight kiss. Little Miss Fox wasn't one tiny bit sleepy. She was too eager to explore and couldn't wait for the next day, so she scurried merrily out of the house. It was cold outside, so she went back to fetch her jumper, then scurried merrily into the forest. It was dark in the forest. Determined to go for a ramble, Little Miss Fox went back to fetch her flashlight then scurried merrily into the forest. The forest was full of different sounds. The wind was howling, the leaves were rustling, the brook was babbling, but she couldn't hear any birds singing, frogs ribbiting, or rabbits hopping. She looked around for her friends, but they were all fast asleep. Her merry mood slowly turned into a sleepy one. Then she made a new friend in the nighttime forest. It was the wise owl. The owl was old, yet very wise. She admired Little Miss Fox's courage, independence, and cleverness. Because the owl's eyes weren't used to daylight, she preferred exploring the forest at night. She asked the fox to tell her what it's like to play during the day. Little Miss Fox was so pleased to tell the owl about her adventures, she could hardly wait for morning to come and wondered what plans Mommy Fox had made for that day. It was then that she felt her little legs grow tired, her eyes began to close by themselves, and her snout started talking ever so slowly. She said goodbye to the wise owl and scurried towards home. Little Miss Fox fell into such a deep sleep that she didn't hear her brother and sister eating their favorite breakfast. She didn't even hear Mommy Fox calling them to join her on the new adventures she planned. The little fox missed out on many nice things that day. From then on, Determined not to miss out on anything ever again, Little Miss Fox was always the first at the table for supper, brushed her teeth with care, and waited for Mommy Fox to tell her a bedtime story and kiss her goodnight. Then she closed her eyes and fell fast asleep all night long. Little Miss Fox dreamed of the adventure she shared with her brother and sister the previous day, and she wasn't bored at all. The next day, she woke up full of energy and took part in everything Mommy Fox had planned for them that day. Piglets Once upon a time, long ago, deep in the forest, lived a family of pigs. The children were cheeky, happy piglets who loved making a mess. Because they didn't like to bathe, everyone called them Scruffies, and they loved that nickname. But one day that changed. The Scruffies were invited to a party where they would be competing in different games. 
They couldn't wait to hang out with all their friends. The first game was a competition in walking across a polygon made of sand, stone, grass, and leaves. It ended by jumping in a pool. As the Scruffies didn't like bathing and had muddy lumps instead of hooves, they only watched this game from afar. The second game was blowing into a flower on a rock. If the breath smelt nice, the flower would open up. But if it didn't, the flower would stay closed. As the Scruffies hadn't washed their teeth in a few days, they preferred to keep their mouths shut. The third game was about dancing. As soon as the music stopped, everyone had to swap their t-shirts with their neighbor. Not a problem for most friends, but the piglets had dirty t-shirts, which were already sticking to their bellies, and they didn't want to swap them for clean ones, so they decided to watch instead. The fourth game was competing in making hairdos. The Scruffies couldn't even comb their hair, as it contained pieces of day's old food. Again, they chose to clap as their friends played. The fifth game was about finding the cleanest hands that would cut the cake. The Scruffies chose to skip this one too and hid their hooves behind their backs. You know why, right? Then the party was over. Everyone was giggling from excitement. They all enjoyed playing these fun games, except the Scruffies. They were busy thinking about the words they heard so many times before, but never really listened. Wash your hooves. Eat with your spoon. Take a shower. Clean your teeth. Until then, the piglets had no idea why they should behave this way. But now they went home, determined not to be scruffies any longer. And they succeeded! They realized how nice it was to sleep in a clean bed without being poked in the back by pebbles. They realized how nice it feels to have clean hair dancing in the wind. They realized how smooth and shiny their teeth can be after being scrubbed with a brush. They realized that story time lasts longer when they didn't argue with their parents over having to take a bath. They realized that it's easier to be creative and to run around with clean hooves. They realized a number of other useful things we already know, don't we? What were the piglets called now that they were no longer scruffies, you ask? Well, whatever their real names were, of course. Scallywag Stag Once upon a time, long ago, deep in the forest, lived a scallywag stag. He was very curious, but not very responsible. When Mom asked him to bring her some bark from the tree, he would answer rather rudely, No, I won't. And when she told him not to leave his glass of water on the edge of the table, he did just that. The glass fell to the floor and broke. When Dad asked him to help prepare some hay for the winter, he answered rudely, No, I won't. And when he told him not to leave the front door open because the snow would blow in, he did just that. And there was snow in every room of the house. When Nana asked him to pass her a cooking spoon from the cupboard, he answered rudely, No, I won't. And when she told him not to stir the bread dough while it was still rising, he did just that. Instead of bread, they ended up having dough for dinner. When Granddad asked him to bring a pair of pliers from the tool shed, he answered rudely, No, I won't. And when he told him not to sit on the chair he was repairing, he did just that. The chair broke, and the stag fell on his behind. But when the bunnies invited him to go hopping from rock to rock, 
he joined them in a heartbeat. As the stag wasn't a bunny, his thin, long legs didn't jump the way they should, so he ended up hurting his left leg. When the hedgehogs invited him to play hide-and-seek, he joined them in a heartbeat. As the stag wasn't a hedgehog, his snout was far too soft for their spines. When he found a hedgehog hiding in the bushes, he ended up pricking his snout. When the fish invited him to a swimming competition, he joined them in a heartbeat. As the stag wasn't a fish, he ended up being carried away by the river's strong current. He hardly managed to climb out of the water and spent all day looking for the way home. One day, the stag was playing tag with a group of squirrels. They were jumping from branch to branch. But as the stag wasn't a squirrel, his antlers got stuck in the branches. He cried out for help. But the squirrels had already moved on and couldn't hear him. Frightened, he tried to free himself, but the antlers wouldn't budge. He was too exhausted to move. Suddenly, he was all alone. He thought about his family and how they kept warning him about the dangers of the dense forest. The stag felt ashamed for having been rude. He remembered all the silly things he had done and realized he should start using his head. Feeling calmer, he looked at the branches again, twisted his head to the side, and finally broke free. When shaking his head frantically, the antlers wouldn't budge. But when he tried doing it calmly, he succeeded straight away. Proud of his success, the stag hurried home. From that day on, the stag helped his mom collect bark, and she gave him a loving hug in return. He helped his dad gather hay, and he too gave him a loving hug. He also helped Nana and Granddad by fetching spoons and pliers. They both gave him a big, loving hug. And so, feeling loved from antlers to hooves, this particular stag became the most caring stag in the forest. Whenever his friends invited him to play, he still did so in a heartbeat. But from then on, he jumped like a stag, sniffed like a stag, swam like a stag, and played tag like a stag. He used his own head and his own body. He was proud to be exactly the way he was. And he was wonderful. Snail and Smail Once upon a time, long ago, deep in the forest, lived Mama Snail and Papa Smail with their son. Because their little one's birthday was approaching, they wanted to prepare a very special surprise. But... Every time Snail and Smail started discussing where to go on a trip, their son would call to them, Mama, Mama, Papa, Papa. Then he would take them to show what he found. Every time Snail and Smail started discussing what to get the little one for his present, their son would call to them, Mama, Mama, Papa, Papa. Then he would tell them about everything he could think of. Every time Snail and Smail started discussing what kind of cake to bake, their son would call to them, Mama, Mama, Papa, Papa. Then he would show them something he made. They listened to him all day, followed him everywhere, and looked at his creations. In the evening, they all sat around telling stories, laughing, and eventually fell asleep together. The next day, when they woke up, Snail and Smail realized they hadn't prepared anything for their son's birthday. Whenever they tried, the little one would call out, Mama, Mama, Papa, Papa. The little snail was overjoyed that his birthday had finally arrived. He was three years old 
and felt so big, he hurried over to his parents and called out, Mama, Mama, Papa, Papa. He wanted to see his birthday surprise. But Snail and Smail sat him down, hugged him, and began to explain. What did they tell their son? They revealed a secret that every big child discovers. It was this little snail's turn to learn that everyone has to wait their turn when someone else is talking. They told him that whenever he wanted to say something, he should say Mama, Papa, and then wait for them to come. To let him know that they heard him, his parents would wave him over. In this way, they could discuss where they would take him, what his present would be, and what kind of cake they would bake for him. And they taught him something else, too. You don't become big because it's your birthday. You become big when you discover all the secrets big children know. How did the snail family celebrate the little one's birthday, you wonder? Amazingly, like every day, they were together, they talked, explored, made things, and laughed a lot. It was indeed a very special day, and not just because the little one's third birthday, but because of the secret the little big snail had learnt. The Squirrel's Tale Once upon a time, long ago, deep in the forest, lived a squirrel who had many friends. But it wasn't always so. When she was little, the squirrel's tail was a very cheeky thing. She could hardly wait to leave her nest, but had no idea what was waiting for her in the outside world. On her first day outside, the squirrel was playing with a grasshopper. They were competing in branch-to-branch -branch hopping. Suddenly, the cheeky tail went, squeak, squeak, squeak. This frightened the grasshopper so much that he missed the branch, fell to the ground, and hopped away in anger. The next day, the squirrel was playing with a snail. They were climbing up a tree when the tail went, squeak, squeak, squeak. The snail quickly hid inside his shell and rolled all the way down to the ground and crawled away in anger. On the third day, the squirrel and a crow were competing to see who would be the first to reach the tree on the edge of the forest. But when the tail went, squeak, 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 the crow crashed into a tree, banged her beak, and flew away in anger. The poor squirrel didn't know what to do. She was very sad because all her friends had left. Every time she jumped and every time she turned, the sound of squeak, squeak, squeak echoed through the forest. Feeling lonesome, the squirrel sat down on a stone and cried. Tears poured from her eyes all day long and all night and the whole of next day, too. A giant puddle appeared in front of the weeping squirrel. Then along came a frog. She asked the squirrel why she was crying, and the squirrel told the frog all about her cheeky tail. The frog suggested catching the tail while in the air. This would stop the tail from going, squeak, squeak, Easier said than done. Practice makes perfect, they say. So the squirrel practiced jumping by turning and catching her tail before it could make a sound. A few days later, she succeeded. And the next day, and the day after that. Soon, 
the squirrel became a true master at catching her tail. The frog was watching all this from a nearby pond. The squirrel's tears had dried up, and the puddle of tears was replaced by a bed of colorful flowers. Every day, the animals came to admire the colorful, fragrant meadow of flowers, and the squirrel learned the important lesson of making an effort for her friends, even when it's not the easiest thing to do. The forest was once again full of laughter, and the animals spent days on end playing in the colorful meadow of friendship. They thanked the squirrel for watering the dry soil with her tears. What about the tail? The tail was no longer cheeky and slowly forgot all about its squeak, squeak, squeak. And the squirrel? She became the most popular and wisest animal in the entire forest. Her efforts had paid off, and that was something she could really be proud of. Two Little Stars Once upon a time, long ago, deep in the forest lived two little stars who loved each other very much. One was a nightly star who played all night, danced with the clouds, chased the wind, and listened to the rustling leaves. The other was a daily star who played all day, danced with the waves, chased sun rays, and listened to the songs of birds. One day, the two stars realized how much they missed each other and how they wanted to spend more time playing together. The nightly star slept during the day, so she invited the daily star on a nighttime visit. The daily star slept during the night, so she invited the nightly star on a daytime visit. Although they both wanted to spend more time together, neither wanted to accept the other's invitation. The nightly star spent all night thinking about what to do. The daily star spent all day thinking about what to do. The next time they saw each other, they realized what they should do. Make a compromise. The nightly star thought that compromise was something you cooked. And the daily star thought that compromise was something you baked. The wise owl told them that compromise was something you mixed together. They poured the nightly star's wishes and the daily star's wishes into a bowl. Then they stirred and stirred and stirred. But it didn't cook or bake. When the compromise was made, the nightly star knew that she would have to get up a bit earlier and go to sleep a bit later. And the daily star knew that she too would have to get up a bit earlier and go to sleep a bit later. That's how they each got to see each other twice a day. They played in the morning and they played in the evening. And that was a wonderful compromise. What is a compromise? It's a mixture that everyone enjoys. A blend that makes everyone happy. Give it a try. You can make a compromise together with someone. Take a bowl, pour your wishes in, and let the other person pour their wishes in. Then stir and stir and stir. No need to cook or bake, though. But be careful. You both have to be happy with the compromise you make. Winter Mouse and Summer Mouse Once upon a time, long ago, deep in the forest, lived two mice. One 
was called Winter Mouse because it was cold as snow. It was always in a foul mood and spent all its days complaining and didn't like anyone. The other was called Summer Mouse because it was always warm like the sun. It was always smiling and spent its days hopping around and liked everyone. One day, these two mice met. Winter Mouse was grumpy because Summer Mouse had stepped on its path and the Summer Mouse was overjoyed to meet another mouse. It liked its mousy friend, even if Winter Mouse kept looking down. Despite the Winter Mouse's grumpiness, Summer Mouse gave it such a tight hug that squeezed the air out of both of them. As you can imagine, Winter Mouse didn't care for this one bit, and he began to complain. Summer Mouse noticed that Winter Mouse's whiskers were shaking. Hmm, perhaps they were announcing a smile. It also noticed that Winter Mouse's heart was beating faster. Hmm, perhaps it was warming up. It also noticed that Winter Mouse looked up slightly. Hmm, perhaps it liked being hugged after all. From then on, the two mice started meeting every day. Winter Mouse still found something to complain about, while Summer Mouse enjoyed every moment they shared. There were days when Winter Mouse's cold heart cooled Summer Mouse's heart, so it too felt slightly colder. The forest animals called those days autumn. There were days when Summer Mouse's warm heart warmed Winter Mouse's heart, so it felt a bit warmer. The forest animals called those days spring. All the forest residents spoke of the two mice that were so different but loved each other so dearly. Summer Mouse had revealed a secret. It showed them what powerful medicine a hug can be. Summer Mouse explained that Winter Mouse isn't really grumpy at us, and we weren't to blame for its foul mood. It just needs the most amount of love, lots of friends, and a big hug. This helps melt its cold heart. One day, perhaps, the sun will shine in its heart too. Until then, we mustn't let the cold of Winter Mouse's heart make us feel cold. Sometimes it's winter. Sometimes it's spring. There's summer, and then comes autumn. Everything changes, and that's fine. What's important is that we're able to enjoy ourselves in the rain, in the snow, in the wind, and in the hot sun. Let our hearts stay warm. And remember, if it gets a bit chilly, just give someone a hug. Hmm, perhaps it's how seasons were made. Who knows? The forest animals sure do.